still looks good. So let's see how that goes. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Shadow and Sun Show. Today is uh, painting the tank um, because this is the beginning of the month. Therefore, we need to be painting things. And of course, we are because we didn't paint anything last month at all. So we're painting two things that have equal size this time because we didn't ever start painting anything last month. And if you do think we started painting something last month. You are either delusional, have zero IQ, or something in between. We, I'm not coping. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get to the, the, the thing that won't be mentioned eventually. But uh, he is going to be painting the Archon Studios Wolverine tank. Why don't you show it off to him a little in case they didn't see the previous videos? No. <laughs> of course I am. This was a fun model kit. Uh, if you if you didn't see the previous video, I learned a few things that I will do differently next time because we've got five more of these models to put together. But uh, uh, when you assemble it, don't assemble it completely, or you will have a heck of a time painting the interior of the tank. Wait, wait, wait. It's is there just, even, is there even more? It, it, there's just a lot of details on the inside of the tank. That, what? Yeah, I know, right? Why? Um, like the I get it. I get it. It's cool. And, and if I hadn't glued on the top piece right here, um, we could have opened it up and you could see. And when I do the next one, I won't assemble them completely so we could do that. And uh, I'm painting uh, the uh, Mammoth Walker. It's either a two or four legged walker, your choice. And I've, uh, I've assembled it so that I can. Remove the legs and let's see if I can just pop that in there. So it can either be the, the two legged walker or, or the four legged walker, excuse me. Or it could be a two legged walker. But I made a really, I didn't really make a mistake, but uh, when I went to uh, primer or I should say paint the other version that we have that I already assembled. Uh, the gray paint that I was going to work uh, uh, into the camouflage scheme just because of the weather or maybe it's all an old can of paint, which I think it's more likely the weather. It just came out like, like I sprayed sand all over it uh, and it was just absolutely awful, so I had to throw that in the goop and I had to strip it all the Don't way. Don't watch the video we made on it. It's objectively terrible. So I'm going to have to strip it all the way back down to the base plastic. And you didn't already? Well, it's it's soaking in the, in the L.A.'s office. Oh, this is a different one. Yeah. Hmm. So it, it's it's sitting in a, a baggie of L.A.'s awesome until the paint comes off all the way down to the plastic. And then I'll reprimer it and probably go with a completely different paint scheme. But with this one, I'm going to try something I've never done before. I've masked it up uh, with my camo pattern, uh, just, you know, random strips of masking tape where I don't want the paint to be. Hopefully it'll be enough to where a mostly white will show up when I take the the uh, masking tape off. So I'm basically just going to hand brush this gray with a really pale, I think it's even called pale gray, sky gray from Vallejo. He's using basic black um, to do just some of the hardware, the things that are going to be dry brushed over with silver or, or gunmetal or, or something like that. That being the, the, the grill in the back, the landing ramp, the gun, and the treads. And it's going to take us a while to get through these, so consider this like a Dragon of the Month, even though it's halfway through the month. But uh, wish me luck on this. Well, bit. yeah, because last month we didn't, so. We didn't we didn't paint something silver and wing it and, and fire breathing. No, we didn't do that at all. No, we didn't. What are you talking about? I, I just, you know, the usual, you know, coping mechanism, I guess. Right. So, uh, wish me luck. I, I've never done this before. I'm going to try and paint this uh, to where, uh, you know, the masking tape will do its usual trick and it won't look so brushed on. And uh, that's why I went with Viejo because it's a much thinner paint. So I'm just going to basically go over everything with gray and try not to get it under the tape. And hopefully when I'm done and I can pull off the tape, it'll have somewhat of a light gray to uh, snowy look to it. When you're doing a snow camouflage, you really want it mostly white with little bits of black and gray to make it look like it's blending in with, you know, mountains or, or rocks or things like that so that it's, you know, all you're seeing is, you know, little bits of, 
the the you know the terrain it's it's melding in with so to speak. If that makes any sense. And he's working on the gun now. And any mistakes I, I make, I could probably go back over and fix with either the the gray or the little bit of black that I'm going to put on it. Just to make it look like, you know, uh, the, sh the shadows of the rocks and things that it's it's hiding amongst or the area that, it, that it's in, that, you know. Because if, you know, to be honest, I, I think that it would be more likely just to paint the freaking whole tank or mech or whatever, just completely white and hope to blend in like a polar bear, but that would be kind of boring. In a way, that's similar to what I'm doing. In a way. Yeah. And if I can get a really thin coat of this, uh, this, this sky gray, it, 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 you know, it won't take away too much from the paint job because... Theoretically, I should be using an airbrush, or we should be using airbrushes, but uh, it's just too cold to not 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 to get the airbrush to work, but to be in the the basically the garage where we would have to paint this, and our garage is kind of a disaster right now. So there's really no no way to to set up the the airbrush station, but rest assured, this uh, you give the, me because this one's too good. What, what kind of mistake brush? Oh. But rest assured, this this uh, spring time we will have our our spray station back up and running, and then we'll be doing all our work. Right. I think I can pull this off, or I'll just if I fail miserably, I can throw it back in the goop with the other one and start all over again. That's the cool thing about LA's Awesome is that it doesn't uh, do a lot of damage to plastic. It, it can do some damage to metal miniatures if you make the mistake like I did and put two different kinds of metal in the same container, in which case you get a little science experiment called electroplating where you find out that the uh, if you don't know what electroplating is, uh, real simply, it's it's a process where a citric acid will microscopically pull particles of one metal to another. Like basically, if you put something in two things in the goop, one being gold and one being uh, like say a, an iron piece of jewelry, it'll literally coat the other the iron piece with uh, little flakes of gold so that it until it eventually coats the entire thing with gold and it looks like it's gold but it's just an electroplate which is you know a very very thin layer of gold. actual gold and I didn't know that was how that was done when I first did that and what I did was I put lead in with some uh, pewter miniatures and the lead miniatures started to dissolve and I'm like what's going on here and that lead was being transferred over onto <laughs> the pewter pieces and I was wondering why they were turning black and then I found out exactly what I had done and were these particularly valuable miniatures they were war zone miniatures from back in the day so they weren't at the time super expensive now they're kind of rare and hard to come by and you just dissolved them well no the lead miniatures are what dissolved and those what were the lead miniatures really not really they were just some grenadier something or other that I was just trying to strip the paint off so I could resell on eBay. And Guess you aren't selling those. Nope, 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 nope. <laughs> Nobody would want them. I had to throw them away because the lead basically kind of disintegrated and uh, I had to throw those you away. You could still technically sell them. Yeah, no. Anybody I sold them to would be quite upset. <laughs> um, <laughs> they would have been furious if had they got those in the mail. <laughs> they were I was like, they were fine when I sent them. I don't know what happened. Did you already take pictures? No, 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 no. no. It was before I had even gotten to that process where 
Because uh, I used to strip miniatures professionally. Oh, really? How did you not know that this was a thing that happened? Uh, because it just... Yeah, it just was... You were always putting two pewter miniatures together or something? Yeah, I was always putting... You know, it was usually just groups of lead miniatures. And I didn't know that that could even happen. So technically it was happening. No, because I wasn't mixing. I, was, I hadn't mixed them before. I just started on a group of war zone wow. miniatures that I wanted to strip. And I just figured I'll just put them all together and... You know, when, you know, it, it'll be fine, but I, I don't really do that anymore, uh, as in the buy and sell miniatures to strip and, and resell. Uh, it's just, it's too much work and too much mess. And, uh, you know, I, I, I was doing it mostly to finish my collection by buying all the miniatures I could and, and uh, you know, Keep the good stuff. Sell the the extras. Uh, you know, sometimes I primer them white, uh, just to you know help the guys out who I was selling to, and I just just got out of that whole idea of, of doing that sort of thing. I, I did it for over ten years, and I made a good amount of money, and got some really cool miniatures in my collection, and. Now I'm on to more plastics and and newer miniatures. I hated plastics. These are plastic, and I absolutely love these. Oh, well, I mean, I thought you preferred metal. Oh, I absolutely do prefer metal. Metal is the way to go. Um, plastic miniatures are invariably overpriced. And but would you want something like this in metal? Oh, if I could get these tanks in metal, sure. Would I pay what it would cost? Uh, not sure. I mean... Uh, the mechs, absolutely, if I could get these mechs in uh, metal, uh, that would be incredible. But they would be, you know, $50 pieces easy, if not 100 So Well, that almost seems reasonable if you think of the price of metal. Yeah, because metal miniatures have gone up a lot lately. Uh, of course, James L. just sent me, I kid you guys not, he sent me like 15 links to a whole oh, bunch of links. metal miniatures. Uh, that he thought I'd be interested in, and of course I am very interested in them. I just uh, uh, I have to go through each link, and most of them are 15 mil, which is cool, but uh, I, I have to, you know, be careful with money. I can't just go, you know, crazy and, you know, oh, buying it, buying it, buying it. Fortunately, these we paid for literally years ago. I got these uh, these max through the Rampart Kickstarter. Uh, I don't know if it was the first or the second. Well, the tanks were from the first Rampart Kickstarter or the third because I think the first Kickstarter was actually resin. And I think I've gotten all the places that the paint needs to go on the base. And now I will move on to, uh, you know, I'll leave the guns for later and just start working on the legs. But yeah, there, he sent some some really cool, cool links, and I think it was yesterday he sent a link to a bunch of miniatures from the uh, the shadow. Uh, not it was never a TV show, but it was a movie with uh, a certain guy who's in a lot of trouble right now. But uh, they were based on the radio show uh, characters and themes and the Rocketeer and some stuff like that. Uh, lately, I've been getting very much into the old pulp style stories, and you know any role playing games that that uses the word pulp in it. I'm like, oh, oh, oh check that out. Um, just the whole mentality of the pulp era was was so much fun. The Shadow, Doc Savage, even uh, Buck Rogers and Flash Gordon and Tarzan. All those things from that era, I, I classify as more or less pulp. There, there's a lot of other stories, but those are the, the ones most of you guys would be familiar with. And it, it just, you know, had that, that whole two-fisted, two-gun sort of massive toxic masculinity and, you know, that sort of, you know, kinds of adventure and storylines that, that uh, I, I think the little guy would appreciate. I know most of you guys out there have at least, you know, a passing familiarity with those kinds of 
characters and stories. John Carter is definitely a pulp sort of thing. Basically, you know, stuff from the, what, what was it, the 20s and 30s onto the uh, 40s and 50s, and then it sort of went into the modern kind of era that we're in now. So how's that coming along, bud? Screw you. Right as, right as you said that I'm... I made a mistake. Oh, I'm sorry. It's kind of boring, folks, but, you know... You're going... You're, if you're going on with your ramblings, you're probably entertaining enough. And I'll probably go over this with the, uh, the Viejo Mecha Wash, the light gray Mecha Wash over the white... I might actually go over with this with a watered down gnome oil. As opposed to the uh, homemade wash that goes in all the cracks and crevices? I like the homemade wash, I really do. But I also really like the effect. Oh, the staining? Yeah. Okay. That's the one thing I don't like about the mech wash. It, it's, it's really nice and pale and barely visible, but on a flat white it really messes it up, so you got to really go back over and dry brush all that white to bring it back to life, and that can be a pain in the butt. But if it's done right, it's pretty spectacular. So I, I might I might take a chance with like the legs on the mechs to do that, because the the legs, uh, in my opinion, would get kind of sooty and greasy, and and oily and. Maybe that won't come off as, you know, ruin. And laziness? Well, not laziness, just just the, you know, I, I want a lot of the pristine white to, to make it, you know, to, to send, you know, really emphasize the fact that it's, it's trying to be a, uh, you know, an Arctic camouflage. Yeah. But I was thinking about some of the other color schemes we might end up doing. I kind of want to do like a... A black, purple, and gray, sort of like a night world. I thought you were going to say green. No, 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 no. Purple and green. <laughs> no, that would be... That it would be, be... It would go with our traditions. Yeah, I know, but it would be... I, it would it, mix them all together, too. But I can't really picture a world where purple and green... Yeah, well, actually, if you look at the old Games Workshop terrain, then it would go perfectly with some of those old terrain schemes that they had back in the day but I want it to be uh, like, a, like a night world where it's you know perpetually night and so the camouflage is you know nothing but dark colors so you mean a world that doesn't have a sun uh, yeah or, or very little sun you know I did the actual details you know I, that, that's not you know it'd be very cold I'll tell you that <laughs> yeah yeah like, like always and yeah like oxygen turns into snow kind of cold yeah. and I was talking to somebody I think it was Squirrel Hermit maybe about Ooh. doing the uh, spray painting the inside of that that, uh, that tank uh, with the bright red neon red to make it look like the the uh, the red alert lights were on. That's a decent idea. I like you, it. you know, like in the picture, you know, of the in the instruction manual of the tank where they show the guys piling out of the tank and the interior is all lit up red. That way I wouldn't have to worry about the paint job. You know, trying to paint the seats and the walls and stuff. Just give it a nice sort of neon red paint job and it just looks like, you know, you can't tell what the colors of anything are because the red lights are sort of obscuring it. I like that idea, but at the same time, I feel like it might not turn out the best. Yeah, the, getting the right color is the trick. Also, when the lights are on, some stuff would still have different colors than other stuff. Right, right, but, you know, it, it's chairs and, you know, the walls and the roof of the thing. Maybe we could pull it off, and then with the next tanks we, we do, we'll just, you know do a better job by not assembling it completely, in which case we will have, you know, you can see all the seats and the belt, the seat belts and the buckles and all that, you know, stuff. Elizabeth Payne just tried to, it's quite annoying. 
What is? Paint the dreads. Oh, yeah. You probably should have used a bigger brush. You are planning on giving me this. This is the one you gave to me. Let's see if we can find it. How about this one? Maybe, but I'll have to pour out more. Yeah. Maybe this time I'll start letting kind of pour the proper amount. Because I'm almost done here with everything I can do with this. I don't think there's anything here. Or at least I don't think there's enough time. Pour out. <laughs> it's a big black bubble pours out and I say that and it pops. <laughs> so I go, great. I thought I was wrong for a second. Okay, I might be wrong now. Okay, good. Good. I have some good amount of paint. It's just all bubble. <laughs> all bubble? Also. Awesome. I actually had that happen earlier when I used that on... Something I was painting. Uh huh. Now you know this is black. <laughs> <laughs> we used to paint the uh, the very tip of these caps with the color because of the paint rack. You couldn't actually see the bottles, and I found out the hard way that you don't want to store your paint uh, sideways. Anyways. Yeah, just straight up and down is the way to go. There's a quote about that. Where? Nowhere. Oh, okay. Because I have no idea what you're talking about. Your sample. Mm. Quite weird. These kids these days with their their weird lingo. It's not even what? I barely understand half the stuff you try to say. It's, it's like trying funny. to be. You know more stuff about that than I do, all right? And that's a fact. You know that's true, by the way. Yeah. It's about time that we did actually get to these. I mean, they've been sitting in our <laughs> closet for almost two years, I want to say. Perhaps, maybe. You know, we, maybe one of these days we'll actually get back to the, the painting of the Dungeons and Lasers that we have uh, stacks and stacks of. That's, uh, that's also on my sort of New Year's resolution list of things that need to be taken care of. We haven't done a dungeon video in a year. And instead of a dungeon video, I want to do a rampart scenery show off video where we build all the rampart stuff and cover the table with all the, the different rampart sets we got and show people, you know, what you can really do with this stuff. Dungeons and Lasers, too, but we never did one with rampart. Yeah. So I'm going to talk to you about something after I just had a brilliant idea. Okay. Top secret. Behind the scenes stuff. I mean, yes. Oh, there's nothing wrong with that. I was telling uh, Jade and Connor we were doing our meeting for gatekeepers that I had a great idea, but I didn't want to share it with them. And I did anyways, but I'm like, I don't know if I should share this with you. I might just keep it for for, for our show. And they're like, woo, woo, woo. You know, no, they're, they're cool about it, but it was just funny. It's like, you know, you know you do that when every, any person talks right? you make mumbling noises. Yeah. Because you like to butcher yourself as smart. Yeah, well, you know, nobody's buying it. I know. Well. There's a couple of people that might buy it, but uh, I'm not going to throw any shade their way. Because they probably wouldn't see the humor in that. Oh, nice job. Nice and clean. Except yes. that one little spot right there. You miss. Just that I missed it and that it got rubbed off, but I should have noticed that it was... Rubbing off? Yeah. I don't want to be able... Oh, well, actually, I did paint that, but it rubbed off. Like, yeah, but yeah. I should have still noticed it. Yeah. You don't make excuses, just go back and fix it. Yeah. Excuses are dumb. Well, unless they're really genius. It gets you out of trouble. You wish you could have made some of those? I have made some of those. But, yeah. It's better to just own up to your mistakes, fix them, and get on with your life.
and you know it's not going to be long before we're going to have to make some decisions on the uh, the new Dungeons and Lasers Kickstarter. I mean, we. Well, you know, I always include you in that process, and the new Dungeons and Lasers Kickstarter is all miniatures, no terrain, maybe some stretch goal pieces, you know. Things that they thought of, you know, to add. The only thing I don't like about that is, isn't that the whole point of Dungeons and Lasers? Yeah, it kind of is. But, you know... They're uh, miniatures are good. I'm not going to say they aren't. I, I, I have okay. a great idea for their next sci-fi Kickstarter, but, again, I don't know if I want to share it with them because, you know... Well, Why wouldn't you want to share it with no, them? No, I'm just I'm totally kidding. I, that's the point. Is if I, I'm not going to go out and... Start making molds of freaking walls and floors and all that cool stuff. Ah, yes, we're going to become competitors to Dungeons and Lasers somehow. Yeah, no, our, our con studios are the... You're already using that basement for something else anyways. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's going to be... The, the new Kickstarter is going to be a set of 400 miniatures and a monster manual to stack them all out. For uh, I guess fifth edition, um, which is fine, you know the the, the book, it, it, you know. I suppose you could use it if you didn't have the miniatures, if you do theater of the mind, but uh, it, it, depending on what the monsters are, they're all supposed to be original, unique sort of their own creation monsters, which is cool. Not gonna lie. No but, one said it wasn't. It's pretty. But. Epic. But, I mean, how many, you know, sets of them would I really need? I'm almost done, don't you worry. No, I wasn't worried. I'm... Someone else was... Someone else was worried. Yeah, you did a good job. I mean, you... I, I should have told you not to uh, paint the bottom of the treads, because now you're going to have to leave the tank upside down to dry. I was intending that already. Okay, okay. Oh, you did a good job on the, the turret, too. Check you out. For now, though, I will... Put it upside down and let it dry? No, I'll do this for now. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's nice and clean. I just want to just leave it white, huh? I'm mostly going to leave it white. Okay. I'm not even sure if I want to do that. No more will stop. Yeah, it, it just looks so nice, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Almost as well leave it black and white. Why not? Well, there you have it, folks. Uh, a little goofing off and painting with, with the, the boy and myself. Uh, brush in the water. Yes, brush in water. Did you see? And we will be back next week to do some more work on these if we don't do a little bit during the week. You, know, you can't blame us because I need to get the tape off as soon as it dries. But we will be back tomorrow with a very special uh, mailbag episode. And then we'll be back maybe Tuesday with um, a regular Tuesday video, although I'm not sure what that is. And then, of course, we'll be back Thursday for part two of the islands and uh, aquatic, you know, high seas adventure terrain that we're working on. But until then, folks... Have a great week. Thanks for stopping by and hanging out with us and putting up with our shenanigans. Hope you guys have a great week and... What? Anything else you want to add before we say goodnight? I don't think so. You want to say goodnight, Gracie? Not particularly. You want to just say goodnight, goodnight anyways? Yes, I do want to say... I, I actually do want to say goodnight, yes. And Angar, hope you're feeling better. Same with uh, our good friend Grim. Hope you're feeling better. I'll be talking to both of you guys tomorrow. And before I forget, uh, please let me know if you got your packages in the mail. We'd like to yeah. make sure uh, everybody's gotten their, their uh, you know. Except uh, for a few people, which we haven't sent it to yet because we don't know where you live. No, I, I've gotten most of the addresses. Oh, really? Actually, there's, I think, one person that I'm still waiting for. But if you've received your package, let us know, maybe in this video or through Discord or email or something like that. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed everything you received. Owen got his book today. Good. Oh, yeah, you, you were there. No, I wasn't. Oh, you missed it? Yes. On Connell's show? Yes, that was before. Oh, okay, yeah, he got it, but he thought we didn't autograph it. Because he opened it and didn't see the inner cover, and then I was like, oh. Like, oh he was like, oh, one thing, I was, he was kind of mad, you know, we didn't autograph it. 
Like, yeah, dang. We sure, we most certainly did. As a matter of fact, I think his book had one of the biggest autograph sections of all well, of them. I know one a big, big book. I know one of them I drew something large at the back of the book, but... That was his. Really? Yeah. So, oh, Owen, enjoy the book. Um, let Jackie know how much you, you, you enjoyed his, his artwork. And until next time, folks. Good night. Bye, everybody.